What's up guys, CP Moddy here back with another video and today we're here trying to answer the question that many people will ask at some point when they've got an SSD does my SSD slow down over time? Now most of us can agree, or if we've ever used a hard drive, I'm sure there are some very young people these days who haven't used many hard drives, but we can all agree that when you use a hard drive for an extended period of time, the drive generally goes ahead and slows down and becomes quite unusable after an extended period of time, and it just becomes slow, thanks to the fact that there are a lot of things installed on it, there's some bad optimized stuff, and all in all, just general day-to-day -day usage can slow down a drive. But does that kind of slow down actually affect our SSDs? As SSDs are way faster and we shouldn't be running into those kind of problems, right? Well today, we're gonna go ahead and actually find out. Now we've actually checked out old SSDs on the channel before, I believe we checked it out in that video right there if there is even a video right there, and we went ahead and concluded that an old SSD does slow down over time. But what if you actually use it as your daily driver operating system drive? What if you use it to boot your Windows every single day for about the best part of five years? Well, I went ahead and did exactly that for the past five or so years with this particular Kingston drive. Now the video that we checked out there that we had an old drive was just a general old drive that sat in a computer. It didn't be used as a boot drive, it didn't have a super old version of Windows on it, it just was basically there to quickly chuck some files on as an extra fast piece of storage. So this is my Kingston B300 SSD now drive. Back in June 2013 I picked this guy up with the initial launch price of about 150 Australian dollars and it launched around that January February timing and this particular model despite it not having a sticker on it is a 120 gigabyte drive and again about $150 here in 2013. Now this was not exactly my first SSD, but it was one of the first SSDs that I bought for particular just a boot drive. I'd had other SSDs in the past, being like 60 gigabytes, I had a 32 gigabyte one, and those were used for uh, either caching of my hard drive, or I believe I used my 64 gigabyte one or 60 gig one, I can't remember uh, how big it exactly was, uh, to install Windows, and that was basically it. So I had a fast boot and everything else just ran off a hard drive, because at the time, even 32 and 60 64 gig drives were extremely expensive. When I picked this guy up for $150, I thought I was getting an absolute steal. Fast forward today and you can get like 500 gig SATA drives for $150. So uh, yeah, technology has definitely come a long way. Now below this particular model was a 60 gigabyte one and above it was a 240 gigabyte model and that was it for this particular lineup. Now a bit of history on this particular drive before we start looking at numbers so we can adjust our expectations to be maybe a little bit lower than what they might be already. Again, this is from 2013 and it actually runs the Sandforce SF2281 controller which for its time was already getting pretty long in the tooth. So it came out with a relatively old controller and by today's standards is very, very old. Now this guy doesn't have a DRAM cache, which is kind of to be expected. And in terms of the flash modules on board, this guy's actually branded as Kingston flash modules, but at the time, Kingston doesn't make actual flash modules. And even by today, they don't make flash memory modules. So this looks to be a Toshiba SanDisk Venture who went ahead and were the only manufacturers to make a 12 nanometer MLC NAND flash, which is what is used on this guy. And unlike today's SSDs, when we actually open this guy up, we see the entire two and a half inch drive is filled up with SSD. A lot of modern SSDs these days, thanks to the fact that data density has come a long way in modern years or recent years, uh, they're just not full of SSD. For example, here is a shot of one of the latest drives we checked out, the Crucial BX500. And then here is this guy. It is full of SSDs and actually weighs quite a bit of heft because it's full of flash memory modules inside of this guy. Rounding off, this guy has a massive thermal pad for heat dissipation because this guy does get hot and features a three year warranty, which is completely blown off at this point. Rounding out, we also do get final claims of 450 by 450 megabytes per second. So at its time, it wasn't really pushing as high as we are here today with most say to SSDs claiming that 500 to 550 megabytes per second. If you want to check out some of them, you can find them popping 
popping up at some point in that top corner over there. So this guy I picked up, it had decent speed for its time, sure the controller was a little bit old, but all in all, it was an SSD and back in the day, didn't perform too bad. Now as I did mention, I picked it up in 2013 and this was my boot drive on my first ever PC that I built myself and then it was also to again on my second and my third and by the time I got to my fourth system it was out of warranty so I just went ahead and grabbed a new one but I repurposed it to be the boot drive of my home server for a few years and then it was repurposed to be now my HTPC boot drive and in that time it has never been reformatted. It started off with a Windows 7 install that I then upgraded to Windows 8.1 because I really liked 8.1 even though no one seems to like it and then recently I reluctantly upgraded it to Windows 10 because I needed to take advantage of some Blu-ray stuff that Windows 10 works a lot better with. So it has always been upgraded, never formatted, never reinstalled because I just never could be bothered. By the time it wasn't my main PC uh, boot drive, I just didn't have time to waste a couple hours reformatting the drive. Now, yes, you just plug in a USB, hit go, and it's all formatted, but then there's all the other problem of needing to reinstall applications and things like Nine Night make it way easier, but what's easier to spend a few hours reinstalling Windows or just upgrade it and continue on where you were going. So I just went down the upgrade route every single time. And well, we're here about five years later after I bought this drive, so let's take a look at how it is faring. So I ripped it out of my HT PC, hence why I'm holding it and plugged it into my desktop PC, and we took a look at Crystal Disk Info. Now with only 2400 power on cycles and only four and a half terabytes written to it, and a mere 23,700 hours of runtime, this guy's actually gotten off really easy. For five years use, it has barely anything actually done to it. Now these numbers do seem like quite a lot, but they're honestly not that much. For instance, I have a Samsung 840 Evo that I picked up about three to four years ago in my system, along with a couple older ones, but this particular three to four year old system has 33 terabytes written to it, 24,600 hours of runtime when it's compared to this drive, that Samsung one is super, super old and still hands up, not too bad. So overall, this drive has gotten off really easy for such a long lifespan. But what the other drives don't have on it is like three different copies of Windows installed on it across like six different computers with a ton of drivers on there. At least 10 different video cards have been installed and put on there without doing any uh, display driver removing or anything like that. It is literally the worst case scenario. Everything's been installed on it and very few things have been pulled straight off of it. So now that we know the backstory, let's get into some benchmarks. The first thing that I went ahead and did was clone this drive to a couple different options for a bit of a um, benchmarking across the board. So the first thing that I cloned this drive bit for bit to was a Samsung 970 Evo, one of the fastest NVMe drives that we have on the market and one of the fastest I have in my office. I did this to see, well, what if you had the exact same setup but on a super fast drive? Now, as a bit of a control, I also to clone this guy to a crucial BX500, the 240GB model, which we checked out in that video right there, for a bit of a comparison of a SATA drive to a SATA drive, because sure it's great comparing it to an NVMe drive, but let's face it, SATA to NVMe is absolute no-brainer, but we do need to see how it compares to a more modern SSD. So let's go ahead and get into some testing. First off was a standard Windows boot time. I just hit the power button. As soon as the splash screen showed up, I started my stopwatch until we got into Windows 10 with no password on there for maximum boot time, or rather minimum boot time, most speed anyway. And our 970 Evo came back with a 15 second boot time from splash screen, which you may be thinking, damn, that's really slow for a 970 but seeing how much crap is actually on this drive, I'm not too surprised at all. Moving on from that, we have our V300, which came back with just 75 seconds of boot time, and our crucial BX500, as we can see right here, just in at 59 seconds. Now you're probably thinking, wow, those aren't really that great numbers. 75 seconds boot on an SSD, and almost a minute on a brand new drive, what gives? Well, as I did mention, there's a lot of old stuff here. Taking a look at the desktop, it might not look apparent that it's really, really old install, but even if we look down at the toolbar tray, there's not exactly that much going on to actually explain what's going on here. If this came into my work, this would be classified as one of those weird jobs that have a slowdown for no particular reason. But because there's been a bunch of drivers and just a bunch of things installed on this guy, which has really done some not great things maybe to the registry or whatever, uh, it is definitely slow here. And also too, not to mention, it's old. This is an old SSD and we 
do need to keep that in mind. Though that being said, honestly, if I spent a few hours working on this guy, cleaning it up a bit, we could have shaved off five to 10 seconds here or there, but just looking at it, ah, uh, the numbers aren't exactly that great. Next up, we have some synthetic numbers here and with about 72% fill on this guy, it is really getting to that kind of highest point you want before you start looking at running out of performance. As, as we mostly know, when you fill up an SSD to about 100%, you're gonna lose a lot of performance. So having it at or lower than 80% fill is generally the best thing to go ahead and do. And coming in at 72% is getting up there in terms of how much space you do have left. So jumping into our crystal disc mark numbers, we get, oh, damn, this is really, really bad. If you remember back early in the video, I mentioned that we have a 450 by 450 rating. This guy gets 179 megabytes per second on the reads and just 95 megabytes per second on the writes. You could say we've lost just a few megabytes per second here and there over the years. This thing is a lot slower in the sequential numbers. And to put it in some perspective, a WD Red hard drive, something that's not known for its performance, outperforms an SSD in sequential tests. Now, compared to some other cheap drives on the market, for example, the Drivo D1 absolutely crushes this guy, and even something a little bit more reputable that might cost a bit more, like a WD Blue SSD, absolutely crushes it as well. Definitely, time has not fared too well on this particular drive. And this really plays into the whole idea of when it comes to SSDs, if you did or didn't know, the general rule of thumb is to replace them every four or so years for maximum performance and also to maximum reliability. As when it comes to an SSD, once they're dead, they're dead. There's not really that much you can do to actually recover data off it. So my general rule of thumb when it comes to a consumer-based SSD, four years, chuck it on your shelf, and that is that, because there's no point running them like this until they get super slow, and also to the reliability definitely tanks and goes into the bin. Now, after doing these numbers, I was definitely curious as to what kind of performance would we get when we went ahead and just emptied the drive, as a lot of the time, a lot of performance loss can be down to just having a full drive, and emptying the drive can, in some cases, give you better performance. So, uh, if you've got an older system that's slowing down a little bit, maybe emptying some stuff off the drive might might actually help. So after I confirmed that bit for bit was copied over to another SSD so I don't lose the current configuration, I went ahead and reformatted for the first time in like five, almost six years, and went ahead and reran my crystal disk mark numbers. And well, hang on, what? 169 by 80 megabytes per second? For some reason, the reads and writes are actually slower once I formatted and emptied the drive than when it was just taken straight out of the HPC and plugged into my desktop PC. Like, what? Even that means the WD Red is still way faster and many other drives on the market are still faster, even though it's empty, even though it's just been formatted and all the proper trim commands have been executed, basically giving this guy the best chance and it performs worse than what it did when it was full, which was really interesting to see. But synthetics aren't exactly the whole story. Sure, we got terrible synthetics on this guy, but what's it like to use day to day? And honestly, it's not that bad. Even though our sequential numbers are terrible, the actual random performance of an SSD, whether that will be new or old, is always gonna be way better than a hard drive because there's no need for a moving head to access data. It's just instantly there. So uh, actually using this system day to day, whether that will be for the media duties or even just booting up an operating system was perfectly fine and honestly if I didn't have a stopwatch in my other hand whilst booting up the computer I honestly wouldn't be able to tell you whether I was booting off the older SATA drive or the newer SATA drive being our BX500 so all in all when it comes to day-to-day -day operations it actually wasn't too bad. Launching programs, booting Windows, perfectly fine for what we were doing here, even though we were getting absolutely abysmal performance. Day to day was perfectly fine. Which then leads us to the conclusion of our video. Does an SSD slow down like a hard drive over time? Simply, yeah, it definitely does show down, and boy, is it really, really slow. After about five years of use, our rated 450 by 450 on the reads and writes went down to just 179 by 90 95 megabytes per second on our sequential synthetic numbers, which is actually quite a big drop from its original numbers back in the day. Which means, in terms of sequential performance anyway, most hard drives would outperform this SSD. But when it comes to an SSD, random performance is always going to be much better than a hard drive, which means in day-to-day -day operations like booting up Windows, loading up programs, saving the odd document here or there, it's actually going to be faster in the long run to run a slower SSD than it would be 
to run a hard drive for the same amount of time, just again because of that random performance. It just can do things so much faster despite sequentially being so much slower. When I took it straight out of my HTPC and just jammed it into my computer, it actually performed better than when I reformatted it and did everything I could to make it the most optimized situation, which really plays into the fact that after about four years, you should really consider changing your SSD because performance does severely drop off and also to reliability jumps off a cliff and most SSDs are only rated for three to four years with some of them coming out with maybe five or six year warranties on the super high end. But all in all, the slowdown isn't as noticeable in day-to-day -day usage than it is on sequential numbers. And with that being said, guys, let me know down in that comment section, what is the oldest SSD you are running? Is it just an old computer or is it like me, you actually have an SSD for quite some time ago? Do let me know down in that comment section. Also too, you can pick up, well, not exactly this kind of Kingston drive because I don't think they make them at all anymore, but I'll leave some links to the Kingston drives down in that description box. Also to the Samsung drive we checked out and also to the Crucial drive that we compared it with. If you want to grab some, you can find them linked all down in that description box. Guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.